What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jam Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, we have been talking on this topic for quite some time. You and I. And every time we talk about it, we get, or I, I, at least myself, I arrive at the conclusion that it is possible that they might arrive at a decision where they're either going to cancel the movie, which is more and more doubtful as we go along, or reshoots. I don't get it, yo. You see careers being ruined over stuff like what he's doing or what he's been up to. I, I I don't know if he has people around him. I don't know if they have security around him now so that he doesn't go anywhere. But I've asked this question before when we've spoken about this individual. What's it going to take? Do we wait till this guy this person or this individual does something, you know, really, really bad. Now it's just been threats. Well, it's, pretty, and... it's pretty bad. If the, some of the stuff with the minors is true, that's already like prison time. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I but, know what you mean. Like, yeah. you mean on like a public during like a press tour, like something very visible to the whole, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's no allegations there. He choked someone out. <laughs> it's on tape, right? Like, you, you can see it, yeah. Exactly. Had it been someone else, Brian, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Or maybe because the saving or the, the argument that they make is that they have a great movie on their hands, right? But is this movie going to be looked at or praised for its... Will this movie do well because of it? it's a good movie or because of what's going on surrounding this movie? Will people be curious to go see it? I, for one, Brian, am not going to go see this movie unless they reshoot and recast as Miller. Your thoughts on what's going on the way they've handled this, what are they waiting for? You know, Leslie Grace and the people that worked on Batgirl are, are you know, putting all this work. They got paid, but nobody's going to see it. According to them, is unwatchable. Listen, Catwoman was unwatchable. Dolomite was unwatchable. The Room. You remember that movie, The Room, that it, it was so awful people would just go to see it, go through the tomatoes at the, at, at the screen? Was in the theaters. I doubt is that bad, Brian, based on the directors and what they've done. But still, even so, I never cared about this movie because where do you go from here? You know, you know me in, in movies that deal with the Batman universe and Batman is nowhere to be found. Brian, where, wh wh what are, what's, what is Warner Brothers waiting for? <laughs> All right, let's do the flashpoint piece first, then we'll come back around on Batgirl. So, because we have a broader DC discussion, I think we want to have, I think this, this most recent earnings call, I think we learned a lot. I think we learned maybe more than I'm seeing written about in the in the aftermath. But let's talk about Flashpoint. So Ezra Miller, the latest, uh, arrested for felony burglary in Vermont. Um, you know, honestly, probably says something when felony burglary, you see the headline, you're like, eh, it's not that bad. <laughs> That's what it says the state of the things would like. You see that, you're like, well, at least he didn't <laughs> fill in the blank. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, other rumors that he's now does not have a security detail, but apparently travels in Kevlar body armor and armed at all times, believing that he is being pursued by the government and the Ku Klux Klan. Listen, 
there's a percentage of things in this area which you can almost certainly say are false, right? It's anything Hollywood, there's always BS. But it's one of those where it's like, if you have a hundred pieces of BS floating around, mm. there's probably a pretty good chance that like 10 of them are true. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And so that's where, that's where we are with this. It's like, I don't know if all of this is true, but as you said, some of it's on tape, some of it's from very credible sources, some of it's from the victims themselves or the alleged victims themselves, it kind of doesn't matter. The train's kind of left the station and you, this guy is, you know, he's been indicted, he's been arrested, he's going to be in a courtroom. Sorry, they will be in a courtroom for something or other in the next mm -hmm. couple of years. There's no question. And whether or not they're convicted, you know, yeah, innocent until proven guilty almost doesn't matter as much to a studio because the PR is almost as, pow as powerful as the outcome. Yeah. So how does Flashpoint, why is it still standing? I think we got our answer in this earnings call, which is it is standing because it is big, Pablo. That's it. David Zaslav, I felt like, drew a fairly clear line of in order for something to go all the way to the theater, it has to be big or they have to believe it can be big, which are not all the same thing, right? Things can bomb. So this is a $200 million budgeted film that is supposedly testing incredibly well, that has high star power, right? Ben Affleck, Michael Keaton, uh, name director, Andy Muschietti. So it is big. It has the, the earmarks of an event. That's why they're holding on to it. That's it. If this movie had the same budget as Batgirl, it would have been tossed a long time ago. But Zaslav is clearly stating he wants to go bigger to the theatrical experience. And anything that they think qualifies for that, they're going to give a leash to. Now, when I heard him really kind of emphasize this, and he made a comment where he said, you know, I've seen The Flash. It's great. Looking forward to showing it to you. He didn't mention Ezra Miller's name, okay? He didn't say, I'm supporting the star. He didn't say the allegations are, he just said, the flash is great. I think there is a growing chance they do reshoot it because it can be big. To me, if you're in for 200 million, why not be in for 300? and get a clean bill of health from the audience with the idea that even if this movie doesn't do a billion dollars, let's say it does 700, let's say it's good reviews, does 700 million, you break even. But if you wipe the slate clean and that's the case, your runway is now clear for Flash 2 and that's where you can make money. Yeah. If you go at this with Ezra Miller because you wanna save $100 million, and the movie breaks even or makes you a little bit of money, then what? He's still not coming back. We know that. Yeah. You might be more stuck from a long-term perspective than if you spend more now to get your franchise right. I think there's a growing chance that they actually do find another actor and completely reshoot the role of Barry Allen. And that is part of why they don't want to take it off the calendar just yet. I haven't heard I anyone say that, but that's just me looking at the facts that he's presented and saying, as a studio head, that is making more sense to me than it did a few months ago. Absolutely. I think it will happen, Brian. Uh, and if it does, it is a movie that I will check out because of all the rumors of this movie being really, really well done. And that's something you hardly hear. <laughs> you know yeah. outside of the batman yeah because i mean it's not just that it's testing well i've heard stuff like quote well, from i was listening to a, a podcast somebody saw on the inside said this is the movie that dc fans have really been waiting for it's big man i mean that's like you know big high praise for this seems against the odds but supposedly like the aflac piece is supposed to be meaningful 
and really well done. Like he has a real role in this. Like I've heard it's like opening act 20 plus minutes, like a real arc and it's cool. Keaton supposedly rocks it as original Batman and it makes sense. I don't know. I mean, if that's the case, then then why not? What what am I missing here? You can definitely make more money in the long run by just cleaning Ezra Miller out of here. No, but yeah. that's the thing is, how many people before all of this broke? Honestly, were you going to see this movie because Ezra Miller was the Flash? Were you going to see this movie because of the storyline and the fact that Ke the multiple Batman were in this? Like, be honest. Like, how many people were like, I'm seeing this because of Ezra Miller? I wasn't. I don't know. Hell no. I've always said, if you've been listening to this show long enough, you already know that Ezra Miller, for me, is not a great Flash. He did a better job in the in the re-release, uh, the extended release of uh, the Snyder Cut. But um, I still didn't care for his portrayal of the Flash. Um, I'm hoping, Brian, you make a great case for that to happen. But let's see. Let's see, because we can't have another incident. Because that press tour is going to be, are you they kidding me? They can't be on it. They can't be on it. It's going to be controlled. Which is, which is weird. It's going to be controlled. They, can't, they cannot sit in front of an interviewer. They cannot sit in front of fans. And if you have the Flash unable to promote the Flash, Although I will say the funniest headline I saw after the felony burglary, and I had, I, I'm kicking myself because I hadn't thought of this. The tagline to the story I saw was the reverse flash strikes. The <laughs> 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 that stuff. Oh man. Shout outs to you who did that because that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh snap. That is funny. That is funny. That is funny. Uh, Batgirl. So yes. to, back to the point of Batgirl, all the things that have come out now that Zaslav officially, officially, you know, in a public forum confirmed it and had some choice words for it, where he said, look, if, if we're not ready to release anything, if we're not ready to release something, we're not going to release it, period. Don't care what state it's in. As I suspected, there are growing reports that that whole, like, it's unwatchable and it's so bad, that's sounding more like propaganda from the studio right now. We've had more substance since to indicate that testing scores were actually kind of average, that in fact, they were on par with some other DC projects, <laughs> including Shazam 2 and One Black Adam. But what I did Whoa. hear... What I did here, so I did listen to a podcast with someone who was in the screening with Walter Hamada and David Zaslav. And what he did say was interesting. He said was, you know, they, so this one I believe, because it's supposedly firsthand. He said they got asked about like, you know, score it, you know, what do you think? What do you think? He said, but we got asked a lot of questions about do you think this is big? And this goes back to that word again, big. Is this big? And the answer was no. The answer was it's not bad, but it plays like a TV pilot, which, by the way, it's a made-for-TV movie. Let's be straight. That's what it yeah, was yeah, supposed yeah. to be. So that, again, feels very consistent with why Flashpoint lives and why Batgirl dies. It's not big enough. And so Zaslav is only going to be handing out big-budget checks for things he thinks can make big-budget dollars at the theater. That's fine, Brian then I get the the case for it not bringing us more subscribers if we put Batgirl on HBO Max. And hence, they'll... I get it. This is business. If business sense, if it makes sense for us to take an L on this, I get it. What are your thoughts on the... What are your thoughts on them not even releasing it on HBO Max? I think it's a risk. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of things about HBO Max that have changed, uh, really, in the last in the last week. Um, but I think, from a business standpoint, the risk is really on the creative side. I think you always want to be care like we talk. You always want to be careful about stuff like this because 
the directors obviously have a pedigree. You know, they directed Bad Boys for Life. They directed part of Miss Marvel. You know, you this is a movie that had Michael Keaton in it. You know, if Leslie Grace is considered an up and coming lead. And I noticed that like when they canceled it, there was that blurb in the release that said, it went out of its way to say, this is not a reflection on the performance of Leslie Grace. And we hope to work with her in the future, which kind of tells you the studio knows they were treading on some thin ice here, that there are some creatives who would kind of be like, in the future, I mean, we just saw Nolan do it, right? When when mm -hmm. when they took Tenet, the way Tenet was handled, he said, no Bounced. thanks. And now he's at Universal. So that's the business risk, yeah. is that you alienate the people who worked on this movie, and some of them who are talented decide not to work with Warner Brothers again for a while as a result. I, you, you know, can I add something there? I think, it's possible that Warner Brothers may want to, or these ta the talent will want to work with brothers, but they won't be the first, second, or third choice if they decide to go to a specific studio with an idea, or whatever the case may be. That's correct. It'll be a last resort. Agreed, a hundred percent. And it, and it may take time. It may be like, hey, we, you know, the agent may be in the middle of that room saying, "Listen, we, you're in the penalty box, or if you want my client, you're paying three x what the other studio has to pay." You know, so it, that's the business side that I think is a risk. The HBO Max side, there's a lot of things here, but I, there, one of the insider quotes that I thought was really interesting and didn't get enough play was there was a comment that everyone who's a DC fan has who's going to subscribe has already, already subscribed. subscribed. I think that's an extreme position, but it speaks to a mindset that spending big on projects, spending big on a lot of projects like Batgirl, Wonder Twins, the original incarnation of Blue Beetle, Static Shock, even Penguin, that having a whole library of that is not going to be the make or break for how many people subscribe to the service. No. You can't totally disagree with that idea. There's no way to prove or disprove who signs up for what reason. Yeah. And we're definitely not in a climate like the pandemic where it felt like people treated anything streaming like it was going to grow to the moon forever. Right? I mean, look at Netflix, right? Netflix lost subscribers, stock has been hammered. You know, Disney went through that stretch where everyone wanted Disney Plus and nothing but, and now that's kind of normalized back down. So streaming is not the weapon that it was believed to be by companies and boards two years ago. Yeah. So you're seeing HBO and and Warner Brothers Discovery, who are desperate to save cash, kind of saying like, where can we save cash? And they're, what they're looking at is the total budget of projects like DC and Prestige TV and HBO Max and saying, is that worth it relative to, you know, and I hate to say this, but you can see it on, you can see the writing on the wall. David Zaslav's an HGTV guy. It's like, am I going to spend $90 million in Batgirl? Am I going to spend a, a fraction of that on a Chip and Joanna Gaines show. Like he's mm. taking the ladder because the, he's like, what's the difference, right? Am I gonna get that much more audience? Mm. If I'm not, I might as well save the money. I think you're seeing a lot of that across the board, a lot. In the earning calls, did they mention anything with regards to DC and it being like in the MCU? Yeah, well, specifically he said, he. He, David Zaslav literally named, you know, Alan Horn, Kevin Feige, Bob Iger, Bob Chapek, and said, if you want to mirror what they did with the MCU and develop a team that sets a 10 year course, everything DC. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. But something that we've talked about for a year. That ain't rocket science. <laughs> but. I think it's clearly not going to be the same as the MCU because they're not prioritizing HBO Max. And in fact, they announced they're going to consolidate Discovery Plus and HBO Max next summer into a single service. Reportedly, over 70% of the HBO, HBO Max dedicated staff will be let go wow. as part of that process. So, you know, listen, I mean, my biggest like rant right now about this whole thing is we have seen all these leaked stories since this earnings call about 
oh, don't worry. This, you know, Peacemaker 2 is safe for James Gunn. And, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let me tell you something. The Batgirl directors, if you believe them, and cast had no idea their project was toast until the press until. release went out, until the post <laughs> leaked it. So why are we attaching any value to a star, a producer, a director saying their project is safe? No project is safe. No project That's is safe. That's dedicated to HBO Max. None. Don't tell me it's safe until I see it. Like I was reading today, oh, Green Lantern's still a go. No, it's not. Don't tell me that that is a lock. No chance. After we just, you just ex expressing, you know, is this worth it? Green Lantern Core is not worth it at all. Especially not if you want to go bigger in the movies. That's a movie. Don't put it on HBO Max as a TV show. That's a waste of the Green Lantern. Yeah. So, my a message to everyone watching this channel any story you see in the next like six to 12 months that says such and such a show is safe just ignore that until you literally see the show on your service and can watch it yeah i, I mean i do think like if it's peacemaker penguin i do think look zaslav's not an idiot in the sense that if he has creators and he has product that has made money or generated buzz he's probably going to give it at least one shot, right? Like yeah. that, like the Batman did $800 million. So you know what? I'll give you a season of Penguin, but I'm not going to guarantee you two and three seasons of Penguin. I, yeah. You know, so Peacemaker may get a second season because the first one got critical acclaim and got some viewers. Great. But there's no assurance beyond that. So it'll be a shame because I think some other really interesting stuff is probably going to get chopped before we're all said and done. Brian, having said all this, you would assume that the quality of shows that we're going to get are going to be of high quality, meaning not necessarily money, and, but it's going to be a good story. It's going to be a good show that people are going to want to subscribe. Quality, you know, quality storytelling, I think, will will be the expectation of many. Um, if they're going around talking about this is either a big meaning it can be big in the theaters or is it good enough to be on a show and is it good enough to generate buzz is it good enough to get subscribers over those are the decisions at the end of the day that they're going to be making yeah look i mean i think at the very least the bar has been raised i mean zaslav did say look it's not about having the most content we're not interested in it. it's about having quality of content so to me, in movies, that is going to... And, and, and let's also say, I don't think it's any coincidence that the studio that was perceived to have effed theater distributors by moving all of its releases onto the service last year is now the one saying, we want to do the most for theaters under the new regime. I mean, talk about a layup for that, yeah. right, that way, yeah. way to mend fences, right? I'm going to spend more money and give you more He's saying he wants to do kind of like 20 to 25 films a year across genres, you know, and and if he's saying they have to be events, that means big budgets. I mean, that's yeah. he's going to spend money there. So that that would excite you. That would send to say, like, look, if you're going to get Superman on the big screen, they won't be pinching pennies on that. They'll spend yeah. Avengers level money if they believe in the project. So that's exciting. That That should excite you. I think for TV, I think the bar is Emmys. That's my guess. HBO HBO Max had the most Emmy nominations of any any network this year. I don't think that's a title Zaslav wants to just hand off in the name of putting more reality shows from HGTV on. Yeah. So I think if they're if they're going forward with a Static Shock, if they're going forward with a Penguin, if they're going so forward with something in the DC universe, I think it's because they believe that show can be legitimate prestige TV and be event type TV consistent yeah. with things like The Wire, like like that, like Game of Thrones, like that kind of TV. That's what they're gunning for. I'm not saying they're going to succeed. That's a whole other conversation. Yeah, yeah, but I yeah, think yeah. that's his vision and his bar. And when you put it up against that, you're kind of like, 
yeah, I don't see any way Wonder Twins would ever win an award. Like, I don't see any way, like, Zatanna would ever win an award. Like, it's just the odds are so stacked, right? Yeah. You think Gal Gadot is going to be Wonder Woman? I mean, I, I do. And, like, there's reports. So one of the interesting subplots has been the Snyder versus drumbeat that I think is really silly. I'm sure you do, too. It's like people are seeing, well, you know, Affleck's doing more in Aquaman 2 and, you know, Gal's popping up in Shazam or whatever it's going to be. Like she's cameoing. So like, you know, Dazlov's bringing the Snyderverse back. Like, that's not, I don't see that at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All I see is he's using stars who made money for him or for the network or the studio to fill the roles of these projects that he got stuck with. Yeah, yeah. That's what I see. And he's letting and, them play and, it And they'd be done with it. And they'd be yeah. done with it. It's like, you know, it's like, you, even if he was Jason Momoa's mortal enemy, there's no way you wouldn't greenlight Aquaman 2 after it did a billion one the first time around. You're going to give him that rope. But it doesn't mean you're going to re-sign him to be Aquaman for the next 10 years. That's not the same, that's not the same question. Yeah. So, I, I mean, Gal Gadot, will it make it to Wonder Woman 3? I mean, the odds are probably still more yes than no. But listen, Wonder Woman 2 was a disappointment. So if Wonder Woman 3 takes another step down, ain't going to be no Wonder Woman 4. Yeah. Not with her in it. No, 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 no. So I say, I, I say be done with it. Be done with it, yo. If you take a look at Wonder Woman 2, after, if you ask me, you have to be done with it. You have to be done with it. I don't know what, what you, you would have to be, you would have to make some great, uh, uh, or big changes to how you want to approach Woman Woman Three because the way the second one was approached, in terms of explaining certain things, certain abilities, was just pathetic. Yeah, it was a big miss. I mean, it's also aged really poorly. I think I put Wonder Woman Two and I put Black Widow in this two movies that, because they were released in the pandemic after we hadn't had any content from Marvel and DC in so long, everyone kind of just got superhero colored glasses and sort of was like oh this is fun this is good and like if you really step back and yes. you evaluate what you saw i just don't think it holds up and wonder woman 84 like is worse than black widow but i just think it's it's rough it's a rough so rewatch do you think black black widow holds up uh after civil war well we had this good yeah i think i think I think Black Widow had it been released five or six years ago. A would have had probably some different characteristics, but would have been, yeah, it would have been a better movie. So um no big surprise here. When Brian, you've been talking about this for ever since we started talking about it, in terms of uh Todd Phillips is his name. Todd Phillips. The sequel guy. Because he <laughs> get that bag, Mister Get That Bag. He is doing Joker to a movie we didn't think was going to really happen, other than the possibility of them paying him a grip, which they done. When Keith Phoenix is like, "Yo, if I want to make my own movies, I need this bag. So let me just go do this." But still, make it interesting. Interesting, how you ask? This so they got Lady Gaga, um, That's Harley she's, Quinn. She's gonna play Harley Quinn, and this is supposed to be a musical. Brian, you already know how I feel about this. Although I, it's not like I'm not a fan of musicals. I, I the, um, uh, what's that movie with Johnny Depp, The Barber? Oh yeah. Uh, Bar was it? Was it called Barber of Seville? No, it was. It was. It was uh... I'll look it up while you're talking. I know the one you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. You know, like Steven, Steven Spielberg's remake of West Side Story is really good from last year. Yeah, Grease, my favorite movie of all time. Rest in peace, Olivia Newton John. John. Yeah. Yes, I remember. I think that was my first crush growing up, but um. So this could be interesting to see what King Phoenix sing, actually. This Brian, I don't, 
consider it a part of that world. This is just something, some else world story. But the question here is, the first one, how much is that movie made for, Brian? Yeah. First one, I think the budget's around 50 or 60 million and it, and it made just under 1.1 billion. Talk about a return on investment. And hey, if you don't even get to that number and you can still keep the budget low and still get 500, 300, 400, that's still a, a W, right? You take those. Um, what are your thoughts, Brian, on this uh, sequel and the direction that they're taking? Well, I mean, the budget's going to be more than 60 because Joaquin got at least 25. Phillips probably got at least 50 and Gaga probably got at least 10. So right there, you're at like, like 100 before you've even like done anything <laughs> with the movie. So the budget's going to at least double on this movie just because of that. Um, yeah, yeah. So I'm skeptical. Um, but there was one piece of this whole exercise that at least I was like mildly intrigued. And it was the idea that the musical might be part of sort of this some crazed piece of the Joker's mind within Arkham. That, that, that supposedly the musical aspect of this movie is going to be something to do with a storyline that's contained within the asylum, which makes me wonder if it's not really happening it might be something that's going inside the Joker's mind and you're seeing some crazy depiction of like the world that he sees and perceives for part of the movie. That at least was like, that's, that's wild. Like that's a swing and a half. But maybe there's something there that we haven't seen. And like, you're going to let Joaquin flex and do things he hasn't done before. And, you know, we know, I mean, Gaga at this point has kind of shown like she can, she can, yeah. hold her own on screen yeah. she's not going to get blown off the screen even by academy award winner we know she can sing um so it's not let's put it this way does it make me like hey i gotta go see this you know first screening opening night no but it, i mean it is different i mean it addressed the issue of like how could you make this movie without it kind of being more of the same this i guess is this is one way to achieve yeah. that yeah Although I tell you what, if I see if I see Batman as part of the musical sequence, I'm gonna lose my mind. I'm out. That's the only thing. <laughs> <that's the only laughs> <thing. laughs> oh, I mean, if you're gonna man. do that, if you're gonna do that, call Adam West. I don't want to see any other Batman do anything that silly. But uh, hey, we asked for it; they gave it to us. Different, different than the Joker musical makes makes sense. Let's see what happens there. You hit on it, though, which is that the margin for error here is so big, which is that this movie could make half of what the last one did, and the studio would still call it an event, probably get some Academy Award nominations no matter what out of it, yeah. and they make money on it. Yeah. Yeah, and then that'll be it. And then that'll be it. Um, so, yeah, it doesn't... Uh, this decision doesn't bother me too much. Uh, it was weird at first because you, oh, I thought this dude wasn't gonna do this, but twenty million dollars in the musical, like okay, it was still confusing. But it's like, it, it is what it is, you know. It, the first one, you can't deny the success of the first one. So, yeah. the other thing, that, the other reason, honestly, that it doesn't bother you and probably doesn't bother me is that this thing has been on its own, off to the side all along. Exactly. Like if exactly. this was, if this was our shared DC universe Joker, I think we feel a different way about it. Yeah, yeah. Brian, anything else out of the call that you found interesting before we wrap up? Uh, I had one other topic that I wanted to cover on, on this point, which is, I think you are going to see a more traditionalist view of some of these stories get told. So I, I made a comment on the last show, we were talking about this, where we we're like, hey, there's the look of, you know, you're canceling a show with a minority lead and minority directors. 
And initially I was like, that's not a look you want to have. And then I sent you this afterwards. I did some more thinking and kind of went through and I was like, wait a minute. Yes, it's not a great look for the current regime, but isn't it actually a tougher look for the prior regime? Because if we're going through and we're, let's say, let's just theorize, let's mm -hmm. say we're going to lim we're eliminating Batgirl. There was a public plea from the director of Blue Beetle not to cancel Blue Beetle. But let's say that, let's say they do. The rumor that the Supergirl spinoff from Flashpoint, that's been canceled. That would be minority led. Uh, if, you know, we lose, my, let's say we lose one or both of Michael B. Jordan's projects, that would obviously be minority led. So then you'd say, wait a minute, the current regime is just actually minority pro minority led projects to which I would say, yeah, but isn't it weird that the prior regime only authorized minority led projects if the budgets were small? I mean, the biggest yeah. origin superhero film of all time, last time I checked was Black Panther. Yeah. I don't know. So <laughs> who's, who looks worse, like the old regime or the new regime? But either way, it's a question, I think Kevin Smith called them out on this, like very publicly a couple, a couple days ago. Yeah. You're going to see more of that. If, we, if they go through and they start eliminating all these and you're like, wait, what's similar about these projects? There's going to be more questions. Of course. But when I see also, as I said, David Zaslav hires Alan Horn, you know, there's a lot of these old time executives who've been around a long time. I just have this feeling like, and we've had this discussion about representation within super within the superhero genre. I just have this feeling that like David Zaslav is going to basically be like, what does it look like in the comics? And that's how I'm going to cast it. And I'm just throwing that out there. See if I'm right. See if I'm wrong. But like, if Superman is drawn predominantly Caucasian in the comics, then he's going to be Caucasian on the screen. I just have this feeling of what's forming up here that you're going to have a very like vintage view. And that will include some representation. And I'm not saying stereotypes, like, you know, Shang-Chi is a stereotypical character in the comics when it originated. I'm not saying they're going to do that. I'm yeah. just saying they're not going to gender flip or ethno flip a lot of their main characters. I think he's going to probably stick to the basics Ooh, of what these yeah. characters have been through the years. And however you feel about it, that's, I think, what he's going to do. That's my how do you how, how do you feel about that? I mean, I'm always at the camp of, like, if it's done well, I don't really care. Me and too. as I've told you, I have no problem with, represent, with flipping ethnicities as long as it doesn't impact the DNA of the character. That's always been my criteria. But... It just it's just a feeling I'm seeing in, in, in the little pieces being moved around that like, yeah, that's what you're probably going to be looking at. Would you have a problem with Batman or, or Bruce Wayne being black? Nope. I was why and we'll and we'll wrap up after this. John Campion said something today that I found very interesting. He said certain characters you can't, you know flip their, their ethnicity like yep. Black Panther. It is, yeah, you know, the fabric of who that character is. You can't do that. Um, for Bruce Wayne, he stated, and I'm not quoting, but I'm sort of uh, paraphrasing. He said, uh, Bruce Wayne comes from a, a privileged um background of whatever case may be i think he put out the video if you want you can check it out um and he said he would have a problem or he, he you know he didn't say we would have a problem but he said he would expect that that the character to be white and i'm like so i asked the question in the comments i don't i think people ignored me probably um so if you're privileged you're you're white <laughs> <laughs> is that what you say? Because that's how he came off. I may have misinterpreted, uh, but I'm gonna go back and really listen to what he said. Um, so it's you know, you said you wouldn't have a problem with it, and but that found that interesting that John Campion would say that. I mean, um, I, I, I have a problem with that statement. I mean, that, that yeah, that's it that, that presupposes that nobody has from you know. Nobody from the African-American community has ever come from privilege ever. Like, so we're going to say like, I mean, 
LeBron James didn't come from privilege, but Bronny James did. Yeah. He's a billionaire. Are you going to tell me that he's not? Like, I'm just saying that, like, that, as I said, Bruce's story, yes, money is a part of Bruce's story. It's a part of his power. It's a part of his influence. The idea that a, a black man couldn't wield that power or understand it or use it or harness it, I don't, that's ludicrous to me. Exactly. Exactly. Um, interesting. But yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the Ezra Miller situation. Are are there people out there? If I mean, I'm already like tapped out. Like, I don't want to see this movie because if it would have been someone else, I think the outcome would have been different. We wouldn't be dealing with this all the time. And, and what's it going to take? for them to, you know, definitively make a decision on on doing research, reshoots for the benef benefit of the film, because you already lost one customer. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that feels this way. So um, yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of that. What do you guys think of the Joker 2 musical? Is it gonna beat out Greece? Is my favorite. I doubt it's gonna beat out Greece for me. I was watching Greece too the other day, and I was like, that is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and Michelle Pfeiffer, I believe, uh uh um um she she denies being in the film, which is like if you see that, that's where I fell in love with Michelle Pfeiffer in Greece too. Um yeah, that's our show for today. Let us know in the comment section yeah. below what you guys think of all this. Uh Batgirl too. What do yeah, you think? I, yeah, I got to throw. Hey, rap, a couple of quick rapid fire ones. Okay. If Batgirl's testing scores were in fact the same as Black Adam's testing scores, how much more worried are you about Black Adam's prospects? You know where we stand, but I just want to add. When I saw that, I said it to you. I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> I just said, I, "I just, I just went like this, Brian." <laughs> We've been talking about this, like this movie. From the trailers doesn't tell you nothing. There's nothing about the Black Adam trailer that's exciting. Nothing. There's only Black Rock. That's it. I, I will tell you. So I, I took my kid to see Super Pets, and she loved it. Ah, um, yes. She went with a friend. She went with a friend. Kids loved it. They they got it. They really enjoyed the the movie. Um, my only and I, I would recommend it to, to kids. It's a little long, but like it's it's pretty pretty enjoyable. They do there's a couple of fun nods for the grown ups. The opening scene is a lift of the opening of Richard Donner's Superman, except oh, they dope. add they add the dog, but it's the same like look, it's yeah. the same feel, the same looking ship. They play the John Williams music, so there's a couple of nice nods. The ending is a little more unfortunate. I'll spoil a little bit of it. They basically borrow Zack Snyder's Doomsday. So the look of that with all the lightning and him constantly getting bigger and like that's kind of the final fight with the pets and the and the actual Justice League is is, mm -hmm. is that. Um the Black Adam after credit sequence is utterly ridiculous. It is it's almost worth a watch because there's a moment on when they come on screen, it is the animated version of Dwayne Johnston as Black Adam. Like you see his costume, his head, he's speaking as, so at one moment you have Dwayne Johnson as animated Black Adam voicing that character. You have Dwayne Johnson as Anubis, Black Adam's dog voicing that character and Dwayne Johnson as Crypto voicing that character. And I'm kind of like, that kind of says it all. And no one in the room to, to have the courage to say, yo, what are you doing? This is whack so much, and doing this. So much. There's no one in that room to tell him that. Anyway, I'll check out Super Pets when it comes out on HBO Max. Um, but yeah, that's our show for today. Hit that like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Energy Report.